but this is uh, one of our talks which was upgraded uh, from one of our uh, poster presentations. So we have a, a it's a 10 minute talk uh, and uh, Vatshah will tell us about genuine high dimensional quantum steering. Thank you very much. Please take it away. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you for a nice introduction, Paul. Uh, my name is Vatsalya Shivasta. I'm a PhD student at here at Watt University. Today, I will be talking about genuine high dimensional quantum steering. This work was done with Natalia Herrera Valencia, Bill Makachan, and Mehun Malik in collaboration with the Quantum Information Group at the University of Geneva, led by Professor Nicola Bruni. Before we dive in, a little information about the group I work with. We are BBQ Lab, or Beyond Binary Quantum Information Lab. We are a small group of young folks, led by Dr. Mihul Malik, uh, currently working to generate, transport, and manipulate high-dimensional entanglement in realistic environment at Heriot Watt University in the beautiful city of Edinburgh. Since there are new openings for postdocs and PhDs, check us out online. Okay, now let's dig in. We are familiar to the concept of entanglement as it refers to the quantum correlations that cannot be explained classically. Entanglement in more than just two levels is high dimensional entanglement and photons are inherently high dimensional in nature, for example, in their spatial degree of freedom, for instance, position momentum, of uh, Laguerre Gauss basis, as well as in their temporal degree of freedom, for example, time and frequency. Any pure entangled state can be expressed in a Schmidt decomposition form, uh, which is given here, where lambda i's are Schmidt coefficients, uh, and one can characterize the dimensionality of entanglement through Schmidt rank n, which is number of non-zero lambda i's. Now, entanglement is a key enabler in quantum comms and computing, which is why it is crucial to certify its presence on the system of interest. And usually, it is done in two trust variant ways. First is device dependent where both parties, Alice and Bob, are trusted. Some of the examples are full state tomography and entanglement witness. Second is device independent ways, where both parties are untrusted and entanglement is detected by violating bell tap inequalities. However, entanglement certification of uh, like through device independent ways are technologically demanding. It requires very high state facilities and offers extremely low tolerance to noise. Hmm. But there is a middle ground between device dependent and device independent, which is one-sided device independent. This relaxes the strict technological requirements of a device independent case. Now imagine a state, rho AB, shared between Alice and Bob. In this case, in one-sided device independent case, we will not trust Alice's side of measurement. What I mean by not trusting is like, we will assume her measurement to be in a black box. What governs the dynamic of this black box, we don't know. We just know that she gives it some input X and box throws some output A. And through her measurement, Alice conditioned the state rho AB or steered the state rho AB to sigma AX, which is also known as assemblage. Now, the state is already present at Bob's side. So once Alice announces her outcome A, Bob can start and perform his side of measurement. And since Bob is a trusted party, he can perform full state tomography on his share of state and reconstruct sigma AX. Now to witness a steering, one needs steering inequalities. Uh, these are like Ben inequalities, as they're a linear function of uh, elements of assemblages, which returns a real number, and is bounded by an, uh, real, a beta tilde, which is maximum for any unsteerable assemblage. Therefore, uh, to show steering, one has to violate this inequality. Therefore, it also uh, certifies the presence of entanglement. Here are some experiments that demonstrated EPI steering in three or four dimensional systems. However, these theoretical steering tests so far can only witness the presence of entanglement without capturing its high dimensional nature. Let me highlight this problem in my next slide. Here is a set of all the assemblages that are four dimensional. This set also contains assemblages that are lower dim, where one dim set contains all unstable assemblages. Now, for example, let's take the states prepared by an experiment that I mentioned before. So far, EPI steering inequality distinguished between the unstable set and all the other. It does not tell which dimensional assemblage is responsible of the steering or what is the dimensionality of the entanglement present. What we want is a particular kind of steering test that can distinguish between the dimensions. That is, we want a steering inequality that cannot be violated by any lower dim entangled state. And in our work, we find that if we carefully choose the measurements for Alice and Bob, 
then one can have a steering inequality that is not violated by lower demand tangled states. So the idea is if we will, if we perform well chosen measurement, Alice can generate an assemblage for Bob that cannot be obtained by a lower demand tangled state. If Alice choose a measurement to be a projector formed by a mutually unbiased basis or a MUP giving the assemblage sigma AX, then Bob's measurement uh, would be a transpose of Alice's measurement divided by some constant lambda, we can calculate a quantity known as steering robustness. The steering robustness quantifies the strength of steering in a bipartite system. Here, the value of lambda is valid only for a pair of MUB measurements in d-dimensional case. And it turns out that by exploiting the connection of the incompatibility of MUBs and steering, we can bound steering robustness with the Schmidt rank of the system. This bound will be satisfied for all the states rho that has Schmidt rank at most n. Thus, we get our steering inequality. All in all, if any states violate this steering inequality, it is entangled in at least n plus one dimensions. For n is equal to one, it shows conventional EPR steering that every other experiment of steering uses. Therefore, we are the first one to introduce the concept of genuine high dimensional steering. Now, how do we do it experimentally? We generate a pair of entangled photons in the position momentum degree of freedom to spontaneous parametric down conversion by pumping a nonlinear crystal, here PPKTP. Here we perform measurements in pixel bases on spatial light modulators. We model MUP projectors from the prescription given by Wouters and Field. Now, SLM couples any selected mode of incident photons to single mode fibers that are connected to single photon detectors from where we get our coincidences between Alice and Bob. The idea here is the same, where Alice performs her side of measurement by giving some input X and announces her outcome A, and then Bob performs his, uh, his side of measurement. And from the coincidences, we'll get the value of the term that is required to evaluate the steering inequality. We employ various techniques to optimize our experiments in terms of scalability, speed, and quality. For more information on our methods, check out our recent work on pixel entanglement. Our experiment enables us to go up to 31 dimensions and see that it is possible to show 15 dimensional steering or the presence of an entangled state in a 15 dimensions. It is the highest dimension certified in a one-sided device independent way. Just to showcase the advantage on working in high dimensional space, let's look at the noise robustness of our steering quality. Let's say a state rho is under the influence of white noise where eta is a mixing parameter. And one needs eta to be greater than some threshold eta star to demonstrate, let's say, four dimensional steering. Now, if we plot eta star with respect to dimension D, where D is the dimension of the Hilbert space, we show that four dimensional steering in four dimensional Hilbert space, our state visibility has to be 95%. While if we work in 26 dimensions, then our state could handle significant noise, therefore showcasing noise robustness. So in conclusion, we formalize a simple two measurement setting inequality that act as a dimensional certificate, thus making it an efficient way to demonstrate steering experimentally in a very small time. We demonstrated steering up to 15 dimensions in the local space of 31 dim, uh, thus certifying presence of entanglement in 15 dimensions. We showcase the advantage of working with QDITs in terms of its high resilience against noise. This paves the way for all the quantum information protocols that are semi-device independent and a step forward to quantum key distribution in high dimensions. So you can find our work in archive, which will be in PRL soon. Here's the reference. I want to thank all of my colleagues and collaborators from Geneva. And if you find our work interesting and are thinking about your postdoc or PhD, good news, we are hiring. You can check out more details on our website as well as follow us on Twitter and contact our group leader, Dr. Mehul Malik. Thank you. Thank you very much, Vachal. That was an excellent talk. Uh, yeah. So unfortunately, because it was a short talk, we don't have uh, time to take any questions. But hopefully, you'll be around for the rest of the workshop uh, to take questions offline. Yeah. Um, I know I have a few, and I'll, I'll come and find you a, a bit later on. So thank you once again uh, for the talk. Mm -hmm.